So I'm a little late getting started on it, but let's go ahead and bring up the newest Inside Star Citizen, which is about the character uh, creation suite and everything. I believe they called it, what did they call it? Avatar, or I'm sorry, Avatar Repertoire. So uh, let's go ahead and get it started and kind of get an idea of what we're looking at and what can we expect. One of the most anticipated aspects of the upcoming Alpha 323 has to be the persistent universe arrival of our... It's a very different background than what they normally have, so I wonder kind of where they're at. Looks like actually it might be just like a green screen of what they expect the character creation suite to look like. Um, we'll kind of get going a little bit more. It looks kind of cool so far, at least if that's what it is. Our new character customizer enabling better representation and a true sense of ownership over your individual avatar in the verse. And to share with you the various ins and outs of what's ahead, let's throw it now to just a few folks standing in front of the massive team that made all of this possible. The reality of the old character creator is that the old character creator could walk so that this one could run. The original mandate was let's just get the PU customizer working in Squadron with building blocks instead of Flash. It was very bare bones. We, we hadn't had a lot of progress on it. We had no design. We had no designer or anyone else working on the project except me. Basically, the, the catastrophe was make it look pretty. The very, very first uh, underpinnings of the character creator actually still exist. It's our DNA system. In the old one, you could own... The DNA system is a little weird to me at times because you've got like all the blending and everything, but you don't... You're basically taking some parts from some of the uh, cartoons or avatars that they actually have set up. And of course, just kind of maneuvering and things like that. So it's a little bit weird to me. I understand the the kind of the concept behind it. But being that they're, I know from what I have heard, they're expanding on it quite a bit with that particular part of it, being able to actually click drag and things like that. Definitely think it'll be a major add-on to it as well. Only blend between the different faces. Also, you could only blend from one face to another at a time. The character customizer for Star Citizen is so important because players get ownership over their character. They're not just representing uh, some player character that some artist has created, but they're representing themselves. Uh, we want the player to be able to represent themselves in the world and the universe that is Star Citizen. <laughs> I want a smoky head. That's kind of cool. I wonder if I can do that. So the character customizer that's coming into Star Citizen in 3.23 is broken. That is a lot of like control and access points there. That's kind of crazy so far. Just the amount that's showing. Down into four main sections. The first section of the character creator is the DNA system, and that's where the player actually interacts with the blending and the shape of the actual head itself. It's still the same DNA system in terms of when we apply it to a character. And the beards, gotta love the beards. I know I'll probably never have it when it has a beard. It's still cool that it's there. The difference is how we interact with that uh, DNA system. So we've introduced face sculpting. This is the big, the big thing. So you can just grab these nodes on the face of the character that you have and shape it as you see fit. What face sculpting allows us to do is instead of saying, I want a certain proportion of a... It looks like also if you grab like the one on the left eye right here, it looks like it's also controlling the one over here, which is good. So it gives it a little bit more symmetry on it. But I also wonder if you might could... If you're going to be creative, if those could be disconnected to where you're only working one at a time instead of both at the same time. So I'm head, it allows us to say, I want to pull this vertex to this position, and then we can work out what proportions of different heads is required to get that vertex into that position. The system is very, very cool as behind the scenes, uh, we can't just uh, adjust the face into certain shapes and be happy with it. We have to also change the rig. We also have to change the corrective blend shapes. But we've also kept the original DNA blending as well, but we've tried to 
improve the user experience of that as much as possible. Now you have a full list of heads at your disposal, so you can see all the heads available and you can tweak, you can take a bit of the nose from that face, you can take the eyes from that face easily. It's quick to use. Yeah, so the PU is, is, is very... Yeah, not having to go like scroll one by one of it and be able to see them all at one place is going to be very, very nice as well. Very modern, sleek looking look. We, we, we're trying to go for like the almost like the Apple Vision Pro look. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it's, it's very modern compared to your squadron and it's, it's a lot more in date, I guess you could say. Basically trying to reduce the number of mouse clicks it takes to get what you're looking for. So some of the other things that you can do in the DNA section is the skin tone adjustment as well as the uh, skin material or, or the skin texture itself. So what you can do within this is you can actually skin tone adjust this into realistic shades of certain skin tones to better represent yourself. Your freckles. Freckle a man on that very, very close to uh, someone I know. That's kind of crazy on how much is there. Cool looking though. And we have some blemishes on there. And these represent actual scans of people that we've done uh, throughout the course of the years. And we've actually scanned a whole bunch more that we will be adding to the pool as a time goes on. But we are always making that pool larger. So the faces are always going to look better and better and have more variations in them. So the next big aspect is hair. So within the hair section, there's a whole bunch of new hairstyles, which is obviously the first and most important thing. Kind of curious to see what kind of additional styles are adding on top of what was already added. Uh around the uh, December patch. One of the interesting things, and uh, the teams I represent uh, worked really, really hard on this to have some hair simulation onto it. Um, so you can see the hair move around as you're uh, even selecting it. And then as you add it onto the character, you can see it move around even more. But better than that, you now also have a massive library of beards and facial hair and eyebrows. That's There's gonna be a lot of crazy beards, I have a feeling. Well, so you can mix and match to get exactly what you're after. Instead of what we had before, where you could cycle through hairs, you could cycle through hair colors. You now have a massive library of all the hairs. Whereas in the previous character customizer, we just had a bunch of preset material variants. For the new character customizer, we want to give the player the power to go in and actually edit those materials. What's even cooler about this now is though we had the hair selections before, you could never tint it. You could never come up with your own color set. We can go in and we can change the natural color of the hair. We can... That's going to be very, very cool because, especially now, you see so many people with so much variety of different hairstyles, different colorings and stuff in it, that being able to actually go and add like different textures and dyes into each of the different hairstyles, I really think is going to add so much variety into everything that everybody's going to actually start looking a little bit different up until they start putting their helmets on and it all gets covered up. Change the dye amount. But I guess that's also what clothes are for whenever you can walk around in game with them. But we also have the new gradient system where you can choose to have one dye color for the roots of your hair, another dye color for the tips of your hair, and then you can set where the gradient changes. Not only do we have like a blonde hair, but then we have a, looks like it's on the beard there too. A, a purple highlight that, that that's done at the end or done at the top, and that's all player configurable. So not only do you have a whole bunch of different hairstyles to choose from, but you've got the full color gamut as well. And all of that is brand new functionality that we've added to a character customizer, so we can update the shader params on the hair in real time. So my favorite aspect of the new facial hairstyles is the variety. We have a large library for being the first version of this, and it's going to grow even more within the coming years. And as we've begun to include more culturally diverse hairstyles in 323, the team is working on more that will be seen in the patches to come. So the third major aspect of the new character customizer is styling. The makeup is another completely new feature for the new character customizer. You'll be able to pick your makeup for eyes, your cheeks, 
the one had a little bit of a star. Kitty looked to it for a minute before they changed the color on it. And your lips. We actually used to have makeup baked into the textures where uh, we had already pre-selected eyeliners and uh, all these kind of things to represent uh, what that given skin tone was. But we wanted the player to make that choice. We wanted the player to have access to all the different gamuts of colors, all the different specular reactions, all the different highlights that they may want to do for their character. For each of these, you will have some base versions that you can pick from, but you can also go in and tweak these on a deeper level. You can set the opacity, you can set different colors for, you can have one color for the eyeliner, one for the eyeshadow. Like the hair, we can set certain colors and parameters on the makeup, so that's like how glossy it is and um, the opacity of the makeup. Unlike the hair, we actually set... The definition on like the eyes and like the skin texture and everything is just kind of crazy to me how wild that's gotten over the years. Been playing like all kinds of different games where you could do like character creation, things like that. But the level of detail on this is just insane. That'd be shape of the makeup as well and the way that and that even had a lot of it even before of course the updated character creation suite and everything's coming in just their characters are like beautifully done we do that is we're basically adding new textures to the skin material on the players and again we update all of that in real time and that is also quite similar to the new freckles and sunspots how they work that's again another texture that we've added to the player character's skin and then we can tweak these parameters on the shader in real time to show more or less freckles or more or less sunspots so when it comes to the different styles and what you can achieve in the character customizer it's been a constant push and pull of making it look really good, really realistic, and letting people just do what they want. And we've been trying to keep it as realistic as possible, but still letting people do exactly what they want with it. Because we're leaving so much power in the hands of the players. They can tweak all these different colors and all of their different, on their hair, their facial hair, their eyebrows, as well as these different makeup sections. And it can get pretty zany. <laughs> So the makeup itself is actually a fairly complex feature behind the hood. Uh, but in the end, I think it actually presents as a pretty fun interaction to uh, changing up the skin tone and, again, representing yourself within the world of Star Sips. So the fourth main feature. So his armor, totally, he needs to switch armor because the, just with that purple hair is going to go better with the nine tails armor. I'm sorry. Just personal thought. Sure, it's all the additional functionality. We'll have a review. Yellow just doesn't go with it. View page where you can see your character. This is when you're actually taking a look at your character as a whole, from the toes all the way to the top of the head. Another part of the core functionality of this is the randomization. So now we allow players to both randomize the whole thing. So you get a totally new look. So you get a good canvas to start off of. Now, one of the really fun things about the character creator, and I didn't mention at CitizenCon and definitely should have, is that we do have the save and load functionality. Finally, that is going to be incredible. So, of course, whenever like we have the full resets and everything, we usually have to go and redo the whole character. If it saves that across everything, that's going to be incredible. Within the character creators. So you'll be able to export your character onto your PC and find that file send it to your friend and they can import that into their game and see that character on their machine so no longer that's going to be really really good i definitely like the change where you have to worry about a reset or anything you can save your character you can reload it you can not only save your character to persistence and get it to load into a pu but you can save a bunch of characters that you can then just load in at any time into the character customizer and you can also send these to other players that they can then load in your custom-made characters as well. And this is the exact same tool that we're using internally at CIG to create NPCs that we're rolling out to all players in 323. And I'd like to take this very rare opportunity to ask you guys into... So that does bring up where you can save like the multiple different characters. Is it going to be where you can actually have like different ones doing different things? Which I mean, I know you can, but... Are there going to be certain inventories that are tied to it, or will you actually be able to, especially, like, say if you have 
a couple of different packs. Like say you've got a starter pack and you've upgraded another pa- uh, ship and everything and have another full package, not just the starter pack, but two different ones. Um, I wonder if you'll be able to actually have the two different characters going. One have one whole set of inventory and things you can access and the other one have a completely different one. Or if even if you do that, if they would still have access to the same full inventory. Uh, I know a lot of different games, of course, have like just using World of Warcraft, for example, they've got the whole guild inventory where you can throw everything in and everyone in the guild has access to what's there if they have the correct permissions. But each individual character has their own inventory as well. So just kind of a thought that I don't know if that might be a plan. Um, They may say something about it here, but be something kind of to consider. Challenge you guys to make a version of Jared and share it with the community and with us so that we can see how close you've got. That's going to get crazy really, really quick, I have a feeling. And if there's one I really like, maybe I'll do something pretty terrible with it. What I'm really hoping to see is a hyper-realistic Chris Perry that someone could send to me for reasons. So that's what's coming in 323. But in the future, we'll also be adding tattoos, piercings, stubble, and more eye settings. So you're going to be able to do even more customization at that point. So this is a major milestone for Star Citizen because finally the presentation is exactly at a state that we wanted. So many different teams have been involved in this, from lighting to environments to feature teams to tech art to tech animation to animation programming. Everyone has seen this, has been involved in this, and it's gone all the way up through the chain, uh, through to executive approval. So it's finally to a state where Chris has actually been happy with it and that we could release it to the community. Really happy. We put a lot of time and effort into getting it to where we want it to be today. So it's come a long way. Particularly happy with like how... I can see a lot of people also having custom made characters that they've got just got a list of like different celebrities and uh different people and having where you can download and import it into the game just all kinds of different things i I foresee that coming soon as well how it's just easy to use and you can basically go from like scratch and just completely start from a clean slate and just create whatever you want really you're going to be able to express yourself with your characters so much more than before and you're going to be able to see everyone in the verse really being themselves or whoever they want to be out there. I think that we have made one of the strongest character customizers that's out there at this point. And we are very proud of this. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the character customizer in Alpha 323 is dope as that it's the next major milestone in our continuing efforts to enable better representation and customization of your player avatars in the verse. And that even more options, things like... I'm fully expecting someone to start moving stuff around and playing some tricks with his uh, overall opacity and freckles, all that stuff. Tattoos, scarrings, and even more are on their way after that. And, of course, if you don't want to spend time creating your avatar, you can just hit the little randomize button down there and see what you get. Random. 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 Random, 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 random. Oh. oh. Hi, I'm David. I have to read the teleprompter. I'm the producer for ISC. I make it possible for Jared to do stupid things like this. And I'm British. That's it just British. I say things like peanut butter, water, and rubbish. And I'm always explaining to others why Jared did things like this. And I'm good at my job. Aww. But my job is being British. Teleprompter. What the? What's that? What's that? You like to have fun. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. And we'll see you all here next week. All right, so um, are we recording?
Yeah, we're all in. All right. So normally, at the end of the show here, we would have a meme image. It's funny. Ha ha. Um, David, do we have anything this week? Uh, we've got that one thing. We're not allowed to show it yet. Oh, the one thing we're not allowed to show yet. Um, well, I mean, who wants to live forever? I'll, I'll get out of here. There we go. Uh, this is a lot better. Can you, can, can, can you see this? No, no. This way, this way. What is it? Wow. Yeah. What sounds do the, what sounds do the birds make? <laughs> Clearly never heard what a bird sounds like before in our lives. Is that better? Is that what you wanted? I know I've just seen some stuff about fauna as well being possibly in 323. Um, I'm assuming that's what they're getting at there, which is really, really cool as well. Hopefully we get more details on that at some point um, or whenever the PTU gets to 323, we actually see a lot of stuff that comes in with it. But as since that's our says for this week, I'm definitely excited about the character customizer. I think it's going to be a great addition to be able to actually save your own characters if nothing else but being able to have imported characters that other people have made i think is really really cool as well and like i said i foresee a ton of people going in making different celebrities that they like um or just random ones all together and submitting them to some sites where you can just go and download it but that's all i've got for this week on the inside star system reaction have a good one catch you in the next one